I'm Andy Nebreski, and tonight I'm going to show you how to catch a bucket full of blue crabs. Right now we're on Cape Cod, we're in Falmouth, which is on the southern side of Cape Cod. And this is really the northern end of the blue crabs range. Um, you get up into Cape Cod Bay, north of here, they really don't exist, but you go south all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and it's blue crab central. But a lot of people don't think of Cape Cod as being a good blue crab hotspot, but it is. You go to any back bay, estuary, harbor, um, you go out there at night and these things are crawling around everywhere. And it's real simple to catch a whole bunch of them. All you really need is a net, we get a bucket, we get a flashlight, and that's really all it takes to get a big bucket full of blue crabs. So first off, I'll talk a little bit about the net. Um, what we really want here is something that's fast, that we can move underwater really quick. You don't want a net that would be suited for like a 30 pound striper. It's gonna be too slow, cumbersome. You want a long handle, this is a six foot handle. Um, you want a thin diameter hoop on it, which is gonna allow it to move quickly underwater. And you also don't want a lot of mesh. The less, the less mesh, the better. Um, like I said, you really want something that you can work fast underwater. Next up, um, we need something to put our crabs in. We're not gonna put them in our pockets. Um, these things are absolutely evil. So we need a five gallon bucket. I get this one pimped out with a nice luggage strap around the shoulder. It's got a little padding in there. Makes it nice and comfortable. I can carry, you know, probably 30, 40 crabs in this bucket. And the last thing we're gonna need is a flashlight and this, I paid a stupid amount of money for this flashlight. It's made by Superbeam. It throws out like, I don't know, 8 million lumens. I don't know exactly how much, but it's hands down for its size, the best flashlight I think you can buy. Um, and this thing really lights it up. And it's small, it's compact. I can hold it in my mouth when I'm working the net. Blue crabs are like deer. You turn a spotlight on them, put them between the eyes, and they're just gonna freeze and throw their, their claws up and they're easy pickings. So the nightly retention limit here in Massachusetts is 25 crabs and there is a size limit. They need to be five inches from the tip of the shell to the tip of the shell. And you also do need your saltwater fishing license to harvest crabs here in Massachusetts and most other states. Um, one thing I should note on in Rhode Island, it is absolutely illegal to capture blue crabs at night. I have no idea why it's the best way to get them. Um, but as far as I know, all the other states around here, it is legal to catch blue crabs at night. But just make sure you check the regulations before you head out. Make sure you might need a license and there might be limitations on the time of day you can capture blue crabs. Okay, right now the sun's just about to go down. We're already seeing some crabs scurrying around here. But once it gets dark and I can light them up with this spotlight, it's really going to be easy pickings. But another 10, 15 minutes, that sun's gonna go down. It's gonna be dark. Just perfect for spotting blue crabs. We get perfect tide. It's uh, low tide at eight o'clock tonight, which is what you want. You wanna head out here in the low tide. You can certainly still find them on the high tide, but it's harder to catch them. They have more places to hide. Low tide, they kind of dissipate into the smaller areas and makes them a lot easier to wrangle them up. So right now we're in a salt pond on the southern side of Cape Cod and this is really ideal blue crab habitat. You're not going to find them so much out in the open beaches. They're going to be in the, the muddier and murkier the bottom is the better. They'll go right up into brackish water no problem. Sometimes you're even better off the closer you get to fresh water the more you'll find. They're lurking out here in the mud during the day, but they'll really come up into the shallows once it gets dark. And we're gonna really kind of concentrate in the shallows along the marsh grass, they really seem to like. I think they're eating the uh, mud mussels that grow in the marsh grass. So right now we're up in a big sandbar. We're only in ankle deep water here, uh, but there's a big line of mud that kind of falls along the shore. And I'm just gonna work in this shallow water right in the edge of the sandbar. And I'm gonna be looking into the mud. That's where the crabs are gonna be hiding. So it's just about getting dark now. Um, we get our light going, we should be able to spot these guys up and start finding some blue crabs. 
All right, we got our first customer right here. So I'm just gonna kind of gauge him up. Yeah, it definitely looks like a male. And we're off. Um, that's probably a five and a half to five and three quarters inch blue crab. You can tell it's a male because it's got those bright cobalt blue claws on it. And these things are absolutely terrorizing to me. I can think of no way that would be worse to die than to be pinned in the water at low tide, tied up, and let these crabs eat you because they're absolutely ferocious. Um, normally, I don't like taking these out of the net, but uh, for a little show and tell, I'm gonna try to wrestle this guy up before he gets too tangled in there. So you can see this guy's got two big mean claws that'll definitely draw blood. You can see I'm wearing gloves, which I highly recommend. The only safe spot to grab a blue crab is right at his butt. So we're gonna go in there. And so he's got one claw in the net. This one is in the net as well. Oh. Oh, you got me a little bit. I mean, that claw is absolutely powerful. It's in that net. I feel like the turtle man right now. So let's see if I can safely extract this guy. Let go of my glove. Come on. And as soon as that comes out, he's gonna go for my other hand. If I can get both claws together, that is absolutely the best way to handle them. Get all his legs untucked. And there you have it. It's a nice, perfectly healthy, nice bright colors on it. Decent sized male blue crab. We call the males Jimmies. And that's a nice Jimmy. And that's really what we want. We're not gonna take any females. You know, I work this spot all the time. I pull a lot of crabs out of here over the summer. And it doesn't make sense to be taking the females that are producing the eggs out of here. So I generally only take the male crabs unless I get a soft shell crab. He doesn't wanna play. <laughs> Oh, he's got my glove again. All right, I'm flirting with danger here, handling this thing, I'm just gonna throw him in the bucket. Oh, oh get out of here. That's a nice one, off to a good start. All right, so that took about all 20 seconds. We're back on the hunt. And we do have to be slightly careful out here. There's some real mean, nasty sinkholes in the mud. So we're gonna wanna keep our feet on this sandy soil. Blue crabs do migrate somewhat, but it's not a very big migration. Um, in the summer months, they come into the back bays, the estuaries, the salt ponds, and then usually around mid to late October, they will head out to sea, uh, but they don't go very far. They just go out outside of the salt ponds, and they tend to look for um, places with eelgrass in the ocean, and they'll just kind of hunker down and sort of hibernate throughout the winter out there. And generally this is a summertime thing for me. Um, I usually don't start looking for blue crabs until you know end of June. But this year I went out in middle of May, which is the earliest I've ever gone. And lo and behold, there was a good pile of them out there. So you can see we got one right here. It's absolutely frozen. Um, I can tell just by looking at it that that is a short, he's not worth messing with. And this wind is making it a little bit tougher to see them. If you get a nice night where there's no wind, they really stick out. But there's a nice one. We're gonna go after that. And you can really see those claws really light up. And the technique you really want is to put the net up over them, behind them, as they're looking at you. Put the net down and then pull the net back towards you. Um, and I found that's the best way to get them. I still mess crabs occasionally. You know, I'd say my success rate is probably 85%. They do move quick. Um, they have these big swimmer legs on them. And when a blue crab scoots, it's either gonna go left or right. It's not gonna go forward, it's not gonna go back. So it's good to keep that in mind. Sometimes if you have two guys with a net, you can really do some damage because you can set up on either side of them. 
So that one is, I would guess, probably five and a quarter inches. Not a lunker by any means, but it's a bird in the bush. This is pretty much how I usually try to get them out of here. And usually if you bang them around enough like that, they'll let go. Yeah, so what we're really doing is we're looking for white. It's kind of like when you're deer hunting out in the woods, you don't see anything white, it catches your attention, you look at it. And there's certainly a lot of dead shells and whatnot in here. But when you see those two claws looking at you with the white, they really jump out. Oh, there's our next victim right there. You can see him. He thinks he's getting somewhere, but he can't really see so good because I got a spotlight on him. It's definitely a legal crab. He's got his weapons up. He's ready to fight. Yep, that's a nice one. Still not a big jumbo, but definitely illegal. That's number three. It's our biggest one yet. And one thing you do have to be aware of is when you put a lot of angry crabs into a bucket, it becomes a contest of the strongest crab wins. So what I'll do is I'll throw some seaweed in here as we're going along to kind of pack them in. That makes them feel more secure so they don't rip each, so they don't rip each other to threat. So they don't, ugh, fuck so they don't rip each other to th oh. <laughs> they eight. So they don't rip each other to, what am I trying to say? To shreds. Shreds, that's the word. So what I'll do um, generally after I get a couple of crabs in the bucket, I'll try to get some seaweed in here. I'll throw that in the bucket. That kind of makes them feel happy and safe and that'll keep them from ripping each other to shreds. Here we have another client. This one looks borderline. And that's actually not a bad crab at all. That's probably a legal crab. Um, but I just don't like taking the time to measure them. I know there's plenty of crabs here. I'm gonna let that one go. Try to find his grandpappy. All right, so that is a fine specimen of a blue crab. That one's got to measure easily six inches. And the way you measure them is from the tip of this spine on the shell to the tip of the spine. So here in Massachusetts, they need to be five inches. This guy is a true warrior. These things are absolutely ferocious and they taste absolutely delicious. Almost as good as lobster, I would say. Um, I still like lobster better, but these things are free. And as you can see, this place is absolutely loaded with them. All you need is a flashlight, a net, a bucket, and get yourself a nice free meal. Into the pot. That one's gonna be king of the pot. So we get a nice bucket full of crabs here. I'd say there's probably 12 to 15 crabs in there. Some good sized ones. And the last step, I'm just gonna take some of this bubble weed that I'm finding here on the shore. I'm going to pack them on that, and that's going to keep them from tearing each other to shreds overnight in the bucket. They don't like being stuck in a small space together. A little more salad in there to keep them happy. And that's a wrap.
three bags of ice. So we have our cooler, we got three bags of ice in there. I get this little plastic crate, which you get when you buy vegetables for your garden. They come in these and happens to fit inside this cooler perfectly. And that's going to keep the crabs from getting down into the water as the ice starts to melt. And now we're just going to dump the crabs right on top of that into the cooler. Just trying to make a run for it. And a little bit more bubble weed on top. And this is going to kind of keep them from fighting. Otherwise, it'd be like a mixed martial arts contest in there. But once that ice starts to chill them down, they're going to really slow their metabolism and cool them down. And that's going to make it a lot easier to get them into the pot tomorrow night. All right, so we had a good night crabbing last night. Now it's time to cook them up. I've had them packed on ice all day. So the first thing I want to do is get the bags of ice out of here. We're going to add the ice to a five gallon bucket. I didn't think this one through very well. Guy wants a piece of meat. Now we're just going to fill the bucket about half full with water. And I highly recommend using a pair of tongs for this. Give it a crab a little rinse. We got a little fighting going on. Somebody lost the claw. And it's still moving. And it's actually smashed up. Now we have all the crabs packed on ice. It's not going to take long, about five, 10 minutes. That's really going to take the edge off them. It's going to make it a lot easier to get them into the pot. So we have a large stock pot here. We have a steamer basket inside. We're just going to fill that with about an inch or two of water. That looks about right. All right. We're going to turn this on high. And you really should add some seasoning to the crabs. A lot of people use Old Bay. Um, I recently discovered this JO number two. This is the real deal from Maryland. And if you go to Maryland, pretty much all the crab shacks, nobody's using Old Bay. Um, this is one of the favorites. A little bit saltier, adds a little bit more flavor. And you don't want to be shy with this stuff. It comes in a big bottle for a reason. So I'm going to dump in probably a third to a half a cup. And that's really going to add a lot of flavor as those steam. And put the lid on it, wait for that to come to a boil. All right, so if you're planning on serving your crabs whole, I highly recommend cleaning them before you cook them. It makes it a lot less messier to eat them. They're not filled with guts and you're not getting gunk all over everything. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to clean a live blue crab. So this guy's only been soaking in there for probably three or four minutes now. You can see he's already pretty tame. It really took the edge off him. So the first step is you can see this is the tail underneath. Actually use a clam knife, knife I found to be the best tool for this. And we'll remove the tail. And after you take the tail, you can see there's a little notch in there. And we just need to separate this top shell. So there's really not anything worthwhile in that shell. We'll give that to the chicken. There you go, Mavis. So now the top shell is removed. You can see these are the gills, and those are also not edible. So we'll just pick those out. Pinch off little face things, whatever those are called. And now we're just gonna give it a good blast with a garden hose to clear out all the guts. Stand back. So there you have a clean live blue crab. Well, I don't know if he's alive anymore, but pretty much all that's left here is meat and shell. So you steam these up and it makes it a lot less messy to eat them. All right, so our 
crabs are nice and icy cold. Get a couple of them cleaned off that will serve whole. We're ready to fire these guys into the pot. All right, water's boiling up nice, nice and hot. You can really smell that J.O. crab seasoning. So essentially, you're just going to stack them in here. I like to put them shell side down, belly up. And you can see that putting them in that ice water really takes the edge off them. If these things were frisky and fresh, getting them into the pot like this would not be so easy. All right, so we're gonna cover the pot and we're gonna let these guys ride for, with that amount of crabs, I'd probably go about 11 or 12 minutes. If you have less crabs in the pot, you don't need to steam quite as long. If you're only doing a handful, seven or eight minutes would be plenty. We'll set our timer for 11 minutes. Now we're gonna add in the ones that we cleaned while they were alive, we'll put them on top. All right, you just want to check these after they've been in there for five or six minutes or so. You can see that water is getting pretty high up in there. And if you're not careful, it will boil over onto your stove and make a big mess. So I'm going to turn that down. But basically, you want those bubbles just to be up over the top of the crabs. And sometimes I'll just sit here and work the throttle like I'm a race car driver. And just to finish them off, turn it up, get those bubbles up over the crabs cover, turn it back down, and just keep, like I said, keep a close eye on it to make sure it doesn't boil over. All right, they've been in there 12 minutes now. These are definitely done. We're going to turn off the heat and bring this over to the sink to drain it out. And I'm just going to dump all these bad boys right into the sink. Now we just want to clean these off. You can see they get a little bit of dirty, some of the uh, insides come out. So we're going to give these a good hosing down to clean them and to cool them off. And now we just need to let these guys cool down a little bit. And I find they cool down a little bit quicker if you put them shell side down and allow the heat to escape. And we're going to give them another quick squirt just to um, clean them off again and cool them down. All right, so here we have the four crabs that we cleaned alive and then steamed. And these are good if you're going to serve the crabs whole with melted butter, which is traditionally how they're served. Um, but I'm actually more of a fan of what I'll do is I'll steam the crabs whole and then I remove all the claws and I'll separate those. Those will make a great appetizer. I'll just serve the bowl of claws with a nice little side of melted butter. And then what I'll do is I'll go back through all the bodies, pick out all the meat out of the bodies, and then I'll use that crab meat to make things like crab cakes or a crab pasta. Um, there's a number of different things. You can do souffles, you can put them in eggs. Um, treat it any way you would use store-bought crab meat. All right, next I'm going to show you how to pick the meat out of a crab that's been cooked whole. All right, the first step is I'm going to break off all the claws and put those in a bowl. So we have our bowl of claws here now, and it's going to make a great appetizer. We'll just serve that with a little bit of melted butter. Um, I generally don't like to eat the whole crab at one time because it's a very meticulous process to pick all the meat out of the bodies. Um, so I'll do these as an appetizer. Now I'm going to pick all the meat out of these existing legs and bodies. Just out of the bodies, we're going to get about a quarter cup of crab meat. You know, it depends on the size. So it adds up pretty quick. If you have 10 crabs, you're going to have, you know, probably at least two cups of crab meat. Just pick just out of the bodies and the legs. All right, now it's time to pick some crabs. Now, there's a number of different ways to do this. Everybody has an opinion, it seems, on the best way to pick blue crab meat. 
Um, I'm pretty much self-taught. This is how I've always done it. It does take a while, but I like to be real meticulous, make sure I get all the meat out of the body, and I like to make sure that I'm not getting any shell mixed in with the meat. So we can take a look quickly here at the anatomy of a blue crab. So this is its swimmer leg. These are what it used to propel itself around underwater. And most of the meat inside the body is gonna be at the base of these swimmer legs. So that is what is generally referred to as the jumbo lump. Um, you hear a jumbo lump crab meat, that is from this tail section of the crab. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna rip off. Okay, to start, I'm gonna remove the legs in the swimmer. And we'll just pull those out. And there is enough meat inside the legs to make it worthwhile going after. So we're gonna pick out any ends that came through with the legs. And now certainly if you had nothing better to do and you had a lot of time on your hands, you could pick the meat out of each one of these segments. Um, I generally just go after this biggest piece here, the first segment. And we're gonna crack off the end. Then we're just gonna kind of squeeze this like a tube of toothpaste. And we're gonna get a nice little nugget of meat that's gonna come out. Now repeat that six more times. Right, now we're gonna go after the meat in the swimming leg of the crab. And same thing, I'm just gonna go after the meat that's in this last segment. I'm not gonna bother picking through all these little tiny bits and pieces. I'm gonna squeeze that out. Now it's time to dive into the bodies in the crab and this is where things are gonna get a little bit messy. So we're gonna remove the tail discard the tail and you can see we have our nice little hinge here we're going to pop off the top we're going to discard the top shell and now this is what we are left with which does not look very appetizing so i'm going to give that a very quick rinse under the sink I'm going to shake it out to get any excess water out of there. Now you can see we have our gills are right here. It's kind of feathery, they have a strange texture. We definitely don't want to eat the gills, so we're going to pop those out and remove those. Now, pretty much everything that remains um, is meat and just shell. And there's actually a substantial amount of crab meat within this body. I'm just gonna clean up the edges. And now we're gonna take this over to our cutting board. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut the body into thirds. So if you hold the knife in there, you can see there's like a nice little natural seam one right there and one right there. Kind of fits in to the bone structure at the front. So we're gonna line the knife right up into that crack. We're gonna cut that side off and then we'll repeat it on the second side. So that leaves us with three sections of crab meat. I'll start with these outside sections first. So I'm just gonna discard any bits of extra shell we have kicking around in there. And now you can see this is the piece of the jumbo lump that was attached to the swimmer leg. We're gonna separate that off. And that's gonna have a nice sized chunk of meat in it. And we're just gonna pick that big lump out of there. So now there's a little segment here that had the legs attached to it. We'll pop that off. There might be a little bit of meat in there, but it's really not enough to get too concerned about. And now we have a section here, and it's basically like five or six chambers that go down towards this end. It's like cartilage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of squeeze this, get that piece out of there. And when we squeeze it, that's gonna push all the crab meat out of those chambers. And now we should be able to pull them out fairly easily. And 
And once again, you just want to make sure you, you don't get any shell. And that's pretty much all that left is shell. Discard that. All right, so this is the second side section. I'll repeat that. Uh, we're going to start with where the base of the swimmer leg was. We're going to remove that, pick the meat. Trim off any excess shell. And now you can see one end is thinner at the bottom than the other. We want to start at this thinner end. Gonna squeeze that meat out of there like it's a roll of toothpaste. Yep. So this is the third section of the body um, that was in the middle of the crab on the bottom. And once again, this is the side that had the swimmer legs. So this is where the most meat is gonna be. And I found um, Actually, a clam knife, of all things, is very handy. This is a, a good old trusty Dexter clam knife. I'm just going to trim down the middle. There's a piece of cartilage right down the middle. Trim that on each side. And this, my friends, is your lovely piece of jumbo crab meat. It's very satisfying when you get it out in one big chunk, but it really cooperates like that. There is a piece of jumbo lump crab meat number two. We are left with three chambers that all have a decent amount of crab meat in them. And this is where the clam knife actually comes in really handy. And it fits perfectly right into the, those little grooves. And there you have it. That thing is picked pretty clean. All right, so now let's take a look at the claws from the blue crab. We're going to have one nice, good-sized chunk of meat right here in the, in the claw. And there's also a nice piece of meat inside the arm. So we're essentially just going to attack this just like we would a lobster. Let's break off the claw. We don't want to shatter it, we just want to lightly crack it. Break off that outside shell. And you can see where a blue crab is actually different from a lobster is the pincher claw is on the top. Um, on a lobster, the piece that moves would actually be in the bottom, so it's almost like the reverse of a lobster claw. Get a little bit more of that shell out. And now we're just going to kind of grab it like this, pull this up, and all the meat is going to come out. And there is a little piece of cartilage that runs right through the center of the meat. Um, and you can also notice that the meat itself has a slight brown tinge to it, and that's absolutely normal. Um, the first time I cooked the blue crab, I saw that I thought there was something horribly wrong. But, and you just notice this in the claws, the meat from inside the body is white as snow. Um, but don't be surprised if the, the claws in the arms have this kind of brownish tint to them. Now we can just slide that right out. And you can see that piece of cartilage that was in the middle there. Next we'll do the arm. So we're just going to break off this end that was connected the crab's body. Once again, crack it gently. You don't want to mash the shell up into the meat. You really want to get it started. And then it's pretty easy to break through those just with your fingers. All right, so we get a nice little chunk of meat right out of that arm. 
dip that in a little melted butter and you got some seriously good eats or you can just eat it straight up. Mm -mm -mm. It's really good. I wouldn't say it's as good as lobster, but I'd say it's 90% as good as lobster and they're free. So get out there, catch some blue crabs.